This is part four of the video titled Watchtower Hypnosis Caught on Video. And this time we're going to discuss the hypnosis and brainwashing right on JW.org, their own website. But like always, my subscribers always catch things that I happen to miss. So before we get started with this part, I just want to go backwards and mention a couple of things that my subscribers have mentioned in the comments that uh, that I missed. So one of my subscribers had mentioned that the whole sisters waiting in a parking lot like they're animals with the window rolled down is not just at conventions and assemblies, it's also at the congregation meetings. So I got a lot of positive feedback of a lot of women that said that's how they did feel like animals with the window rolled down. And some had mentioned how they were married to elders and every week when the elders have their elders meetings, well, actually not every week, but maybe like, I don't know, twice every other week. But then when they have their elders meetings after the midweek meeting that the elders' wives would be stuck waiting in the car for their husbands to finish up with the elders meeting. And sometimes those elders meetings can go two or three hours after the actual meeting. So it's kind of the same thing, except it's just not at the actual uh, convention. And it's not as bad because elders' wives can wait in the kingdom hall, but for some reason it's kind of discouraged where a lot of them, I'm not sure why, feel they have to be out in the car. Maybe because the elders' meetings are so supposedly confidential that maybe their husbands rather them just not even be in the building. But this whole thing of women in the car waiting is not just for the assemblies and conventions. It's the same thing uh, with the local meeting when the elders have their elders meetings every week. Now, another thing that a subscriber had brought out that, that I didn't think about was this person said that the cleaning really is a waste of time at these conventions because when they rent these big conventions out from a vendor the convention or the people who own the uh, the convention that they're renting, the stadium, they have to clean anyway before they rent it out, right? So when someone else rents that uh, that stadium, they already have to clean it, right? So what the subscriber was saying is that all this cleaning is kind of a waste of time anyway because they're obligated, especially with things like COVID now, that they can't just trust all the witnesses did it. Like, they have to clean the stadium anyway when they rent it out to somebody else. So, and I can't verify that as a fact, but it makes sense to me. Like, for example, when you get a hotel room, you don't have to vacuum on the way out. The, the hotel doesn't say, well, you're not allowed to leave until you clean everything and we're going to do a spot check after. You know, when you rent a hotel room, you enjoy the stay, and part of the service of renting the hotel room is the fact that they clean up after you, right? I mean, would you go to a hotel that said you can't check out until you clean and vacuum and mop and do it? Of course not. So it does make sense to me that at these conventions, the witnesses are not under any obligation from the vendor to have to clean anything, right? They're renting it out. And like my subscriber said, when they rent it out to somebody else, most likely they would have to clean anyway. So what is the big thing with them having to clean? And, and another thing I mentioned too in my last video, I mentioned this in one of the comments, is that you're pretty much cleaning invisible spots because one of the witnesses, they're cleaning after every session. And... Witnesses are clean people, so you're not really, there's not really that much mess. But when you're trained to clean after these conventions, you have to mop the whole floor. You got to wipe down everything. You don't just say where you see a spot, clean it up. Like you're trained to just clean everything, even if it's like invisible where there's nothing even there. So 
again, they shouldn't have to clean. And whether or not the hotel or whether or not the the people who own a stadium are going to have somebody clean after the witnesses. The point is, is that if the witnesses are guests, then they should have the luxury of not having to clean, right? Why not just let them enjoy the, the assembly and leave after? Because they're not under any obligation whatsoever to have to clean a stadium. But this goes to the slave program, as I mentioned in the last video. It's all slave training is what it is. That's what the spot check is. That's what the whole cleaning is about. It's slave training. Right? If they really cared about their members, they wouldn't have to do that. But I thank my subscriber for mentioning that, which is a good point, that the stadium owners, they're going to clean anyway before the next person comes. So what is all this shenanigans all about? It's slave training. And the one more thing I wanted to bring out for my last video is that, so I had mentioned that that convention reminder video where they were talking to them or, or like, you know, for children, talking to them like they're absolutely stupid and insulting their intelligence. I had mentioned how before the convention, they will watch that video during their midweek meeting and study it. So I just wanted to show you how dumbed down the organization is making their their members. Because when I looked at the, the curriculum, you could say, for studying the convention reminder video, it was even more dumbed down than I originally thought. So you can find this on their website. It's the what they call the meeting workbook, and it's April 2016. And you can get this right on their website. And then you want to look for the week of April 25th to May 1st. So if you can see where I've highlighted it, under living as Christians, this is the curriculum on the convention reminder video where they talk to them like they're five years old. And notice the instructions. So it says it's a talk, right? So what that means is that an elder or ministerial servant, probably an elder, that they're supposed to give a talk based on the video. Right, so not only did the witnesses watch this video that already is dumbing them down, now they need a Jehovah's Witness to give a talk about the video. Well, I don't know what they're even going to talk about because it's so self-explanatory to things that they were saying. It was all like talking to them like they're five years old. And then during this talk, he's supposed to play the video as well. Right, so that's going back to what I said and um, what I brought out in... The hypnosis video part two, how with the watchtower, they keep putting these points over and over and over and expect you to study at home. So the, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they would have watched the convention reminder video at home. Then they're going to go to their midweek meeting. Now they're going to have a talk about the video and play the video again while talking about it. I don't know how much they need when the video was already simplified and, and dumbed down to begin with. So then it gets even worse than that. So in the meeting workbook, not only do they have a Jehovah's Witness give a talk about this video, and not only does he even have to play the video while he's making a talk about it, they even have pictures for them to follow along with. They're already playing the video. Right? Have you seen in the instructions that they're playing the video? So why do they need additional pictures in their workbook to follow along? Well, that's because they're being dumbed down. And then where I have highlighted, it says, as you watch the video, convention reminders, think about ways you can show love for others at the convention. So it's acknowledging right here that they're already watching the video, but then they got the, the pictures for them to follow along. So witnesses are actually brought down to a state of absolute dumbness. And I don't know if that's a real term, absolute dumbness, but if it's not, I'm coining this term for the state that Jehovah's Witnesses are brought to. They are brought to a state of absolute dumbness. Now, you've seen the video, you've seen me play this video in my last video, the convention reminder video, 
and you can see how dumbed down it already was. It was already hard to imagine that they're playing this for grownups, how to behave at a hotel. You know, things like, it, it's insane. But then they're brought to a state of absolute dumbness because how much dumber can they bring them to a state of by then playing the video again while they have a, a, a Jehovah's Witness giving a talk on it, and while they're playing it, they need pictures to give them in their meeting workbook so they can follow along. I mean, you can't get any more dumb than that to bring them down to a state of stupidity like that. But as you can see, this is part of their curriculum, and it's not for children. It's for adults. And this is why they don't want Jehovah's Witnesses going to college, because imagine if Jehovah's Witnesses went to college and showed their, their schoolmates their curriculum on their midweek meeting. Look what we're learning at the Kingdom Hall. Can you imagine how they would just get probably laughed right out of college? But you see, this is why they don't want them associating and having anything to do with college, because as long as they keep their education low, they will keep teaching them with stuff like this. And again, it's bringing them down to a state of what I would call absolute dumbness. So now let's get into the hypnosis and brainwashing on JW.org. So the first thing that I want to mention on JW.org is that last year, or I'm sorry, not last year, two years ago, this was in 2022. You might have noticed that now, when you go on JW.org, and they started this in 2022, that they're now tracking cookies. And the reason that this is a problem, because I already know some people that try to defend Watchtower, they're going to say, oh, everybody uses cookies. That's normal. It is normal. Certain sites use cookies. Some don't. But everyone that kind of understands cookies understands that the real meaning of it is to track what you're doing what websites you're on. So they can sell your information to third parties and stuff like that. And it's just a way of spying what people are doing and, and tracking stuff. That's really what it's for because there's a plenty of websites that don't need cookies and they run perfectly fine. And nowadays what, what, with the uh, internet speeds that we have, 5G and 6G, that whether, whether you have cookies or not, the web pages are gonna run just as fast because of the high speed internet that we have today um and there may be other things why cookies maybe have legitimate purposes but as you can see it's privacy settings and for those that don't understand cookies the reason why cookies has to do with privacy settings is because it is a matter of privacy it has to do with them tracking other websites and stuff from your computer now i first learned about cookies back in the 90s i remember it was in the 90s because i remember just thinking like cookies, like I'm thinking chocolate chip cookies, like what order cookies. So this was explained to me in the 90s. And as a teenager in the 90s, I could see right away it's really about tracking, right? Not because your web pages run faster. Um, but I won't debate that point because I know some people believe that. But basically, the bottom line is that it's always a privacy setting for a reason, because it is a, an invasion of privacy when websites um are tracking cookies. So... This is why it's a problem on JDB.org because this is not new technology. This is old. Why is it in 2022 that Watchtower finally decides, you know what, we want to start tracking data? Like, why now? They've never done it before and they never need to have done it before. And they couldn't justify doing it before because most people do understand that it's really used to track stuff. And they can sell your data to other, you know, um, third parties. Everybody kind of knows that. So this is why Watchtower never had had this on their website because it is a privacy concern. And they can't really justify why do they need to track cookies. They, they don't. So this is why it's suspicious is because they didn't start doing this until 2022. Now I'm going to give a quick story on when I first ran into this. So when I ran into this in 2022... And I went on JW.org and this, this thing popped up, privacy settings. I got scared and I thought, oh my God, Watchtower is on to me. Like, I'm thinking they know I'm looking at apostate literature. Like, I started to panic. 
because I thought it was just my computer. Like, because Watchtower never has a, a um something like this pops up, like cookies that they never have anything like this. And that may sound crazy to think that oh, I was I was scared. And I thought it was just me. Well, a lot of people have this story with um with the book of uh Crisis of Conscience, where they'll say that when they ordered the book, they were worried that witnesses were going to find out. Um, I just talked to one. Pimo, who's actually from the same congregation I was in, and you know he's Pimo. He, you know, I I ended up connecting with him, and you know he's still a member of the congregation I was in, so they don't know he's talking to me. But anyway, um, this this Pimo was saying how when he got the Crisis of Conscious book, he was literally like closing all the shades in his house because he was nervous that what if what if like the witnesses come to his house and they look in the window and see the book. So he was saying how like he was, he was that paranoid about being caught. And that's what this organization does. It makes you terrified of doing any sort of research. So going back to the cookie story, when I went on JW.org and that popped up, I thought like watchtowers on to me. They know I'm looking at apostate stuff. Like I panicked for a little bit. So um, when I took uh, my wife's phone, and the message didn't pop up. I thought, oh my God, it's just me. But then I realized that it didn't pop up because she already accepted the cookies. And once you accept it, you're not going to see this message again unless you clear your, your cookies out or your data. So I then realized, okay, this is everybody, not just me. But again, the reason this is a problem is because they didn't always do that. So the question is, why are they tracking people's data now when they've never done this before? So uh, another PMO, and it's interesting that I'm I'm actually connecting with people who are PMO who are local to me, but this other person I was speaking to, I warned this person about this. I said, "Oh, be careful because Watchtower is tracking people's data now." And this person said, "Oh no, don't worry. I I always decline. I never accept the the cookie policy." But this is where you have to learn what I call lawyer language. Because a lot of times lawyers are the ones that write these things for organizations. So if you read the settings carefully, and I want to just put this as a warning, especially to PMOs that are in the organization, they're looking at so-called apostate stuff, is that if you read carefully, and you can see what I have highlighted, it clearly says that some cookies are necessary to make our website work and cannot be refused. So you may hit decline and think, okay, I'm good, but they know what they're doing. It basically it doesn't matter if you hit decline or accept, they're letting you know right there that some cookies are necessary and cannot be refused. So if you continue to use your website, they're tracking your data, period. And it gets kind of technical as far as what, what you accept and what you decline, but the ones that they really need, you could be sure the ones that they're saying cannot be refused. So just pay attention to that. If, if you're a PMO and you're looking at so-called apostate stuff, and especially if you're a ministerial server or an elder, it doesn't matter if you hit decline, watch how it's tracking what you're doing. So then if you go to the privacy settings, and if you see what I have highlighted at the top, it says, we may store or retrieve a small amount of data on your mobile phone, tablet, or computer hard drive. So, and I'm not saying that some of this isn't standard with websites that use cookies, but again, there's a reason that Watchtower decided in 2022 to start doing this when they never done it before and never needed to. So again, why are they doing it now? But it's important to understand this stuff that when you use this website, you're basically they're letting you know that they can retrieve data off your phone, right? And this is all written in lawyer language, so don't expect that they're going to be honest with you. They're just writing the bare minimal that they have to tell you by law. So it's saying they can take data off your phone and your computer hard drive. So it's just important that, that you understand that. And then the next thing that I want to highlight is that it says, we do not seek to identify individual visitors unless they volunteer their contact details through one of the forms or applications on the website. Now, again, 
This is lawyer language. We do not seek to identify individual visitors unless. These are the keywords you got to worry about unless. Unless they volunteer their contact information. So this is something, again, for witnesses, especially people's who are looking at apostate stuff. If you go to the bottom of JW.org's main page, you're going to see at the bottom it says JW Hub. And this is what JW Hub is. User information and passwords. So when I was a ministerial servant, only ministerial servants and elders needed to have a login information on JW.org. So if you're a servant or an elder, you can't get around this. You have to make an account with JW.org. And as the cookie policies say, they don't seek to identify individual users unless you volunteer information. So right away, ministerial service and elders, you're screwed in a sense, right? They, they're, they're basically going to identify you and what you're doing. But nowadays, here's the thing with the login information is that what they've done is they digitized everything. So now for somebody who wants to volunteer for Bethel, or you want to volunteer to build Kingdom Halls for free, free labor, you now have to do these applications through a user login on JW.org. They're doing everything now like that. So it isn't just now servants and elders. Most Jehovah's Witnesses are going to have a login information if they want to apply for certain things. And once you do that, according to the cookie policy, just to be aware of that, they're telling you they're not going to seek to identify individual users unless you volunteer information, right? So this is how they got you. And back when I was a ministerial server and I had a login ID, there was no cookie policy. So you don't need cookies. You don't need to track what people are doing in order to have a login information because I had a login information way before they started using these cookie policies. But you see, that's how they're going to get you. So just be, be careful of that. You, if you have a JW login or ID, they can and will identify you as an individual user and start tracking data on you. So, uh, and it and it does say where it says, no, this is what they claim. They're saying none of this data will be sold, used for marketing, or used to remember other sites you have visited on the internet. So one, just the fact that it says that for those that don't, under, don't understand these, these cookie things is that by cookies, they can track all the sites that you visited. Watchtower is giving you their word. Well, we're not going to do that. But keep in mind, these are the same people that lied in court with the Royal Australian Commission and claim that when people are disfellowshipped, normal family functions continue as normal, except for spiritual activity. So, so these people lie. So they lie under oath. So don't be so sure that just because they say that they're not going to do that, that they won't. The point is they now have you could say the access to do that based on you volunteering your login information. So don't be so sure you can believe what they're saying. And that's just the note. The point is they can take data off your hard drive, off your mobile phone, and they will identify individual users if you volunteer your information, which you are going to do that with, with, that, um, with the JW login information. So then in the second section, which is what they're claiming, that these are the strictly necessary cookies that you cannot at all change. Well, let me go back. Yeah, so these are the cookies they say you can't change, right? But notice it doesn't tell you what exactly what which ones you, they can't change, what they're doing with this. It just says you can't change. And you can click on these necessary cookies. Actually, no, you can't click on it. That's the point. It's already cooked for you. You can't deny these cookies. And what I have highlighted says they are usually set only in response to actions you take that amount to a request for services, uh, such as setting your privacy preferences, login in, or other forms. So notice the word usually. That is basically, again, lawyer terminology. As soon as they say usually, 
that basically means they can do whatever they want because they're basically saying usually it's all in response to things such as, you know, privacy, logging in, filling out applications, whatever. But usually basically just means this is what we normally do it for, but it can be used for something else, right? So if they if if you get flagged as a so-called apostate, don't don't be so sure to think that they're not going to track what you're doing. You know, so I just want to put that out there. And you know, what I what I personally think, because if you watch my channel, you know that I only give you facts and I show you facts. So when I'm speculating, I'm going to tell you when I'm speculating. So all this cookie stuff, this is what they can do, right? I can't say for a fact what they will do with your data, but this is, they're spelling out for you what you're giving them permission to do. So what I personally think is that the reason they started doing this in 2022 is I think they want to track down who these witnesses are that are leaking elders letters and things like that. That's what I think. Right. I really believe that. And so anybody that's PMO, especially if you're one of those people that you're leaking documents and things like that, Watchtower may be on to you. Right. And especially if you're an elder and you have a login information. So just be careful that they can retrieve data off your phone and hard drive. And just be aware of that. And don't think you can trust everything this policy says because this is just for legal purposes. They're only putting here what they have to by law. Doesn't mean that they're not going to go beyond what they're actually saying. So, and just to emphasize this point, it doesn't matter if you decline the cookies. It, it says right there that certain ones you can't deny, period. You can't deny certain ones, but... If you have a login information, you're already agreeing to it anyway, which most witnesses who are elders and servants have to have that login information. So just keep that in mind. And when I start seeing this message pop up on JW.org for me personally, what I did is I deleted my phone back to factory settings and I never went into site again for my cell phone. I only did JW.org on another device once I known that they were tracking stuff. So if you're a servant or an elder and you have to have a login information, it may be wise to do all your so-called apostate stuff on another device or vice versa. But just keep that in mind that for some reason in 2022, they now want to track what you're doing. Now, the next thing I want to discuss on JW.org, this is going to get into more of the hypnosis now. So this is JW News, and this is the main story right now. I was putting this research together last week, so I can't say if this is still going to be the, the main story being shown. Probably not. Uh, but if you look for this article, the Bible's message widely publicized during the week of 2024 Super Bowl. I'm sorry, that definitely looks like hypnosis. You see how the left side and the right side have a weird, like, blue-greenish, like, look and you can kind of see through it and you can see on the left side there's someone on the cart and on the right side there's a cart from another angle but you see how it's like blue or greenish i don't know about you but that looks like something hypnotic to me i have no idea what that is anyone who understands like subliminal messaging and and hypnosis like type of like when it comes to visual aids let me know in the comments but that looks like something hypnotic why it looks like that uh but the reason I want to talk about JW News is because this was created for the purpose of telling the witnesses that the only news that they can trust about Jehovah's Witnesses is on their website. So I remember when they first started doing JW.News, that's how it was basically uh, advertised to us witnesses, is that we have our own news source, so don't believe any lies, any negative stuff about witnesses you hear from other news sources. This is the only one you can trust, right? So this is a form of information control, so they don't get the real news about witnesses. They just get what they want the witnesses to know. So if you look at some of these articles, Brother Shagan sentenced to eight years in prison. Witnesses reach multilingual, multilingual audience, strengthened by 
the force of brothers and sisters. 50 years of religious freedom. So most of their news is bogus. It's just court stuff involving their right to preach, right? And then they do have real news like deadly wildfires, right? So they have some real news on here to make it seem like, you know, they, they reported on natural disasters. But if you read through these, these stories, most of them are just stories of brothers and sisters that were in prison for their faith and stuff like that. Like this is, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, this is the only news that you need to know as far as Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide. So this one on the right is, is coming up at the top as like a future, uh, you know, article, like a special article. Brother Oleg released from Russian prison, right? This is one of your top stories. So let's click on this and see what this is about. Right? So March 5th. So this is pretty new. Brother Oleg released from prison, from Russian prison. So... This is one of their top stories, right? This is JW News, and don't trust any other news source but their news source, right? So they're telling the witnesses this is the only news source that they can trust. But the only stories they want to give you is stories like this, right? Brother Oleg released from prison. Well, what about news stories like this? Right? I mean, this is mainstream news. This is real. This is not fake. So, don't you think that Jehovah's Witness parents have a right to know the real news like this? Are they more concerned with Brother Oleg being released from Russian prison for his faith? Or do you think Jehovah's Witness parents need to hear news like this? Don't parents have a right to know that this stuff is going on in the congregations. But as you see, you'll never see this on JW.org news, but why not? It's mainstream news. So I'm going to play this small little clip for, for any Jehovah's Witnesses that may be watching this because you're not going to get this on JW news, right? You'll get it on a so-called apostate channel, but they're not going to play this on JW news. But just listen to this for those who aren't aware of this. We are here today to announce charges in five cases which are part of an ongoing investigation against multiple men across Pennsylvania for sexually assaulting children. I would also like to give a special thanks to our partners in law enforcement, the Bay County Sheriff's Office, and the U.S. Marshals who assisted us in the apprehension of the individual. All five men had the trust of the victims in their families. And all five men were members of the Jehovah Witness congregation, and many of them gained access to their victims through this organization. Notice she said they gained access to their victims through this organization. You see, here's the problem, and this is why parents need the real news. What Jehovah's Witnesses are told is that the elders and the ministerial servants are appointed by Jehovah God, right, from heaven. So in Jehovah's Witness world, if you have a title of being an elder or a ministerial servant or even a pioneer, you're looked at as, okay, you can trust them and they're safe because Jehovah appointed them. That's how their system works. It has nothing to do with a criminal background or none of that stuff. If you're appointed an elder or ministerial servant, you have the trust of everyone. And there are situations where parents will leave their children with grown men or grown women if they have those titles. So if if a, a, a parent, basically, if somebody's a congregation elder, they may go out with an eight-year-old girl or an eight-year-old boy by themselves out in service because the parents will trust that he's an elder. And same thing with a sister that's a pioneer. 
a sister that's a pioneer, somebody will maybe let them work with their eight-year-old boy or girl because, oh, she's a pioneer, right? This is what Jehovah's Witness parents believe, that that's all they need to know is they have that title. So when she says how many of these people that were blessed in children gained access to their victims through the church and gained the trust, this is why they need to know the real news, because it doesn't matter if you're an elder or a ministerial servant. In fact, most of these child abuse cases, I think a lot of them are done by elders. You know, um, I'm not sure so much about this particular case. So this is real news. Why is this not on JW.org website? Right? It's real news. So shouldn't it shouldn't parents be able to, to know the real news? But they're told don't trust any news except JW.org. And Christina Hingston. They're here behind me. And this particular story, so this is CNN right here, this this page. So it made CNN, right? This is not just local to Pennsylvania. If it's on CNN, it's being broadcast to the whole world. Yet this does not make JW News the only news source that they're told that they can trust. They're told any news reports that are bad are lies, right? Apostate lies. Only trust their news source. And this story that's made CNN doesn't make JW.org, right? You see, that's deliberate. Now, I want to explain something, too, why this why this uh, story should be on JW.org. So this is a story that's local to me. Three police officers, one retired officer charged with DUI. Now, I bring this up because this, you could say, is a negative report, right? Maybe. And this report, it doesn't mean that all police officers are bad. It doesn't mean that whatever police department they're from can't be trusted. It doesn't mean that the news station hates police officers. But this is news, right? The reason why this is reported is because it's important that the public know that this took place, right? That police officers were charged with DUI, right? It's important that they are aware of this and that they also know that it's being investigated, it's being taken care of. This does not mean that they hate police officers. So the reason I bring that up is because just because this is a report, oh, I'm sorry, uh, before I get into that, yeah, so just because this report um, of the police officers, it, again, it doesn't mean that there's anything, that they hate police officers, right? I lost my thought for a minute. So going back to the report of the Jehovah's Witnesses in Pennsylvania, like, it doesn't mean that all elders are bad if they report that, right? It doesn't even mean that their religion is not the so-called truth, which is what they're told. I know it's not the truth, but what I'm saying is for them to report a real news story to make parents aware, they can still do that. That's not them saying that all elders are bad, but it's news that they should still be reporting now, what I wanted to get into about that is that, so when somebody like myself brings this and puts it on YouTube, I'm told that I'm evil, Satan has me, I'm an apostate, I'm telling lies, like, that's what they say. So I can show you a news clip from CNN, but the witnesses will think I'm lying about it, that it's made up. The only news they can trust is JW.org. So if you go to their website and you search the May 2021 study edition of the Watchtower, this is what it looks like. It's May 2021 study edition. And the article that you want to look up is study article 19. Nothing can make the righteous stumble. 
And then you want to go to uh, the last page and of that article and paragraph 19 and 20. So I highlighted the main points, not because I'm trying to brainwash you like I mentioned in the second video, how they make you highlight stuff, but I'm highlighting it so you can see clearly the screen uh, what I'm showing you. So notice what I have highlighted in paragraph 19. It says, yes, at modern times, a few well-known witnesses have left the truth. When they put the well-known in there, they're talking about... Uh, what's his name, Franz, that wrote the book Crisis of Conscience, um, Raymond Franz. But they're talking about all so-called apostates. So then it says, um, in modern times, a few well-known witnesses have left the truth, become apostate, right? So that's me. That's what the term they call me. I'm an apostate. I'm, I'm evil. And then they try to turn others away. But then notice what it says. They have spread negative reports, half-truths, and outright lies about Jehovah's Witnesses through the news media and the internet. So this is the claim of Jehovah's Witnesses. So they're claiming someone like me, who is a so-called apostate, that what I'm doing on my channel is I'm spreading negative reports, half-truths, and outright lies. Now, if you watch my channel, and I want to put this out there for any Jehovah's Witnesses watching my channel, I will send you a check for $1,000 if you can find one outright lie on my channel. It's an outright lie. I'll send you a check for $1,000. You're not going to find one. Or have truths. Now, if you notice, if you watch my videos, I show you the evidence. And in some cases, like, for example, when I go through the subliminal pictures in the books, I will show you the physical book. I've actually ordered and paid money to get some of their old literature so I can put the book up in front of the camera and show you what I'm saying. Now, you may disagree with my assessment on certain things, but I will show you the proof. I always show you the proof. So there is no outright lies or half-truth that I'm showing on my channel. But here's the brainwashing and hypnosis. There's some little bit of hypnosis in this paragraph. So they're very careful with the words they choose and how they place them. So notice it says they have spread negative reports, half truths, and outright lies. So three things in a row, and they conclude with outright lies. So they conclude with the worst one, which would be an outright lie, a deliberate lie. But what is a negative report? So what about that story about the drunk police officers? That could be considered a negative report, right? But that's just the perception of the person taking that information in. Some may look at it as a positive report that they were caught and brought to justice, right? But you see, by calling it a negative report, what that should say is it should say they have spread true reports and then they can say half truths and outright lies. But they don't say spread true reports. They manipulate words. So by saying negative reports, it has a certain condensation like it's a lie. But someone could say Australia Royal Commission, that's a negative report. And it is negative when you think about all the children that were abused. Yeah, it's negative. But it's a true report. Now, it could be considered positive report that it's being dealt with, right? So, but they use the word negative, and then they follow it with half-truths and then outright lies. So the hypnosis is telling the witness that a negative report is an outright lie. That's how they worded it. They carefully chose their words carefully, because all those reports that are true about Jehovah's Witnesses, you could say is negative. The fact that the Guardian posted an article saying, why are you guys part of the United Nations? That could be looked at as negative, right? That's a negative report that the witnesses were lied to this whole time. You see, they're twisting the words. Negative report does not mean that it's not true, and it does not mean that it's not important that that information gets out. 
Jehovah's Witness parents need to know the real truth. They need to know that this stuff is going on. Um, but anyway, so again, they, they're going to say that my information is nothing but negative reports, half-truths, and outright lies, manipulation. And then they say through the news media and the internet. So like they're even, in a sense, attacking the news media, that the news media is given false information. Right? And this is why they have JW News, because they don't want to give you the real news. They use JW News as a way to hide the real news from their members and to tell their members that anything negative, which is basically translate to it's a lie, don't believe it. Right? Trust our source of news. So then if you go down further, you see where I've highlighted in paragraph 20, how can we avoid being stumbled? So this is what their answer is. Studying regularly, which just means studying the Watchtower. By praying continually and keeping busy in the work that Jehovah gives you to do. Right? So it's work such as free labor, building kingdom halls that they flip in some of the churches, the, the slave labor. You see how they, they talk to witnesses? It says, keep busy in the work that Jehovah gives them to do. Well, if you tell people that Jehovah, the God of the universe, said you need to do this, you need to do that. Yeah, they're going to keep busy because they Jehovah told them to do that, right? But Jehovah didn't tell them anything. They're making this stuff up. But then it says, if we exercise faith, we will not panic when we hear negative reports. Now, isn't it interesting the way they worded that? If we if we exercise faith, we will not panic. Well, why don't they say what the negative reports are? Right? You see, if they said. If we exercise faith, we will not panic when we hear about the Royal Australia Commission because this is how we're dealing with it and the problem. But they don't even tell you what it is. All they have to do is tell the witnesses, if we exercise faith, we will not panic when we hear negative. And that's it. They don't even have to give the witnesses the courtesy to even tell them, are these negative reports true? Right? All they got to do is simply say, we will not panic. But just the fact they put that in there, they know that if witnesses know the truth and the real news that, that's actually going on, they will panic and be like, is this really the true organization? Then it says, our love for Jehovah and his word and our brothers and sisters will help us to avoid being stumbled by those who have left the truth. Right? The truth, right? So somebody like me, I'm told I left the truth. Because remember, if you've seen part one of my video, they say that their religion is so pure worship that it is the very definition of truth itself, right? And that's why Brother Loesch said the word truth 120 times in 17 minutes, right? Because that's how true the religion is. It's the very definition of truth themselves. So I left the truth, right? The very definition of truth is what I left because that's how pure their worship, their their um religion apparently is, according to them. But again, notice they don't even have to say what the reports are, right? So they have witnesses in this thinking that anything they hear is a negative report, which again, that doesn't mean it's not true, but they word it in a way where they're going to think that any negative report is a half truth and an outright lie. It's all lies, right? So even CNN is making this story up completely, right? And, and this is like world news, like local, local news stations cover this and big news stations cover this. But the news that they want to give you is Brother Oleg released from Russian prison for his faith. Now, I'm going to pose this question out there to anyone, and this is going to be an undisputed point. I guarantee you, if people in the comments say anything negative, no one, no Jehovah's Witness will go anywhere near this question I'm going to ask. They'll mention everything but this question. I'm going to ask a question that's undisputed. Which one of these news stories do you think Jehovah's Witness parents need to know? Brother Oleg was released from Russian prison for his faith? Or five members of Jehovah's Witness a congregation charged with sexual child abuse and gain access to their victims through their network? Well, anybody that's not corrupt... This is a no-brainer question. There's thousands, millions of Jehovah's Witness parents that are in this religion. 
they need to know the real news. If you're going to have a newsroom and you're telling your members, don't trust anything that you hear negative about us, only trust our official news source, you have an obligation to give them the real news because they think that the story on the right is an apostate lie, right? Because you've seen what it said in the Watchtower, right? That people like myself, we spread half-truths and, and flat-out lies, right? So don't trust me. So if you're telling them don't trust other sources, they have an obligation to put this on their website. So the question that I ask is, which one of these stories do you think Jehovah's Witness parents need to know? Obviously, the answer is, is, is obvious. So then the question is, why is it that instead of giving them the real news, they give them this crap story of Brother Oleg released from prison? Why? They're a facade. This is a fake, phony religion. This is not real news. It's crap. This is, this is what they're using to hide the real news. There's nothing wrong with putting this story on. Again, just, just like I showed you the article of the police officer driving drunk. If JW News put this on their website, this does not mean that they're saying all elders are corrupt. But it's bringing real news, awareness. People have a right to know. Jehovah's Witness parents have a right to know. And no Jehovah's Witness can argue the point that the story on the right is the one that needs to be on JW News. So the question is, why is it not there? Because this is a corrupt organization that is deliberately, they're deliberately covering this stuff up. They don't want their members to know this. They want to give them fake stories instead and, and say that people like me are lying or have truth. Is there anything half truth about this story that I'm showing you? Is this a flat out lie? And as far as it being a negative report, I think it's a positive report. It's a positive because it shows that they're caught. Something is being done about it. It's being exposed. Right? That's a that's a positive thing. And that's kind of why it's important that that they put these stories out there to show that, hey, we're we're taking care of this. This is a problem in this organization, and we made these arrests. Right. So whether it being a negative report or a positive report, it actually doesn't matter. It's all how you look at it. Negative that it happened or positive that they got caught. But the point is, it's being kept on purpose. JW Newsroom is a sham. That's why they created it. They created it to mislead people. So the next thing I want to show on JW.org is you might have noticed a reoccurring theme in the last three videos I did, and it comes up in this theme again. And that's the theme of treating Jehovah's Witnesses like children, like they're stupid, like they're dummies. They're insulting their intelligence. This theme came up in every video that I've done on this hypnosis. And it comes up kind of by accident because as I'm putting this information together, it's just like popping out, right? And it, it's a reoccurring theme that it doesn't stop. They insult their intelligence. They dumb them down. They bring them to a state of absolute dumbness where they can't get any dumber. That's, that's what they're doing. So... This is the Bible reading, right? So if you go to their website, you can read the Bible, their version of it, and you have a play button where you can play it so it can read it to you. It's, it's an audio Bible, like an audio book. So it used to be normal, but then they changed it. With this new gray Bible, they decided to change the Bible reading. And what they did was they dumbed it down. So I'm going to play it, and I want to show you how dumbed down and how they're treating the witnesses like children, like they're stupid, like they're dummies. So when I play this, what you're going to see is that, or what you're going to hear is that they make the devil sound like, like the Lucky Charms guy, right? Like, like a cartoon villain. Right? I keep thinking of Lucky Charms when, when I hear the sound of Satan, but listen to the voice of Satan and tell me, why do they have a voice like this for something for adults? Bible reading. Right, But listen to this voice. Chapter 4 Then Jesus was led by the Spirit up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
After he had fasted for forty days and forty nights, he felt hungry. And the tempter approached and said to him, If you are a son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Why is the Lucky Charms guy reading as Satan? But notice the voice of Jesus. As bad as it is that they're using Lucky Charms for Satan, what they do with Jesus is far worse. But he answered, It is written, Man must live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from Jehovah's mouth. Now you might be asking yourself, why did I say that that voice was worse than Lucky Charms as Satan? Did you recognize that voice? Listen to it again, and who that is is what the problem is. So listen to it again and see if you recognize the voice of Jesus. Then the devil took him along into the holy city, and he stationed him on the battlement of the temple and said to him, If you are a son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels a command concerning you, and they will carry you on their hands, so that you may not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You must not put Jehovah your God to the test. Did you recognize the voice? Mark Sanderson, Governed and Body. That's not a coincidence. They're using someone as Jesus who we all know. Witnesses all know Mark Sanderson very, very well. You see, you typically want the voice of Jesus to be somebody unknown so that when you're reading it, you can picture Jesus. But when you use a Governed and Body member, who everybody knows what they look like and what they sound like, that creates a hypnotic effect. Because when you're reading this, they can't help the picture Mark Sanderson's face when Jesus is speaking. That's deliberate. And just to give you a real story of this, I'm not making this up. So when they first changed this Bible reading, I used to like the old Bible reading. But when they changed it to this one, I couldn't listen to it because when I heard Mark Sanderson's voice, I kept picturing him. And nothing against the way he looks, but he obviously doesn't look like Jesus. He can't play Jesus. But because I know Mark Sanderson's voice, I'm picturing his face. So my ex-wife said the same thing, and she's still in this, this cult. She said the same thing, like, yeah, she, she's picturing him because she knows what he looks like and that the voice of Jesus should be somebody anonymous. So both of us, we would sometimes, when we go to bed, we would play the Bible, and we were still playing the old version because we both had the same thing with this, this cartoon version with Lucky Charms as Satan and Mark Sanderson's face as Jesus. But that's hypnotic. That is very deliberate. They want, when... when a government body member speaks, they want them to think of Jesus. And when they do the Bible reading and listen to Jesus speak, they want it to be a government body member to implant in them that they speak for Jesus, for Jehovah, for God. That is very deliberate. Again, the devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and do an act of worship to me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, It is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is to him alone you must render sacred service. Then the devil left him, and look, So I want to show you now the old version, and this is the one that I was still listening to because I couldn't stomach the newer version. And keep in mind, this is for adults, so listen to this one. This one sounds like it's for adults. This is before they dumbed them down even further. Listen to the, listen to the person reading 
and when Jesus speaks and when Satan speaks. Chapter 4 Then Jesus was led by the Spirit up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted forty days and forty nights, then he felt hungry. Also the tempter came and said to him, If you are a son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But in reply he said, It is written, Man must live not on bread alone, but on every utterance coming forth through Jehovah's mouth. Didn't that sound like a normal audiobook? Right? I mean, it was the same person reading, and they just changed the tone of their voice a little bit, but that was normal. That's an audiobook. It was done with respect. Right? When I listen to that guy read, I can picture Jesus. I can picture Satan. And I'm not picturing the Lucky Charms guy when I picture Satan. Now, when I say Lucky Charms, I don't mean the newer Lucky Charms commercial, because you know how they change everything. But when I first heard that, I kept thinking Lucky Charms. So I ended up finding a very old Lucky Charms commercial to kind of validate it, why I keep thinking Lucky Charms. So notice the way that the Lucky Charms character used to talk. Listen very closely to his voice. You whole laddies, up here! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they're after me Lucky Charms. Just a new old cereal with marshmallow bits and lucky shapes. Yellow moons, green fawny clovers, orange stars, pink hearts. See them mixed right in with the old cereal. Just a charming cereal. Simply charming. A shortcut. I'll take it. I'm sorry. I just, I got to play that again. L listen to his voice. mouth. You whole laddies, up here! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they're after me Lucky Charms. Just a new old cereal with marshmallow bits and lucky shapes. Yellow moons, green four-leaf clovers, orange stars, pink hearts. See them mixed right in with the old cereal. Just a charming cereal. Simply charming. A shortcut. I'll take it. So you heard the old Bible reading from the Jehovah's Witnesses, and it was normal. And as you can see, this is for adults. It's not in the kids section. It's the Bible. So why did they decide to dumb everybody down and now make a joke out of Satan as he's lucky charms and use Mark Sanderson, which we know what he looks like, and he can't portray Jesus, but they put him there anyway, knowing that when we hear his voice, we're going to think of him and not Jesus. Why would they dumb down the Bible reading and make it childlike like this? So let's listen to the Bible reading again with that in mind. If you are a son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man must live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from Jehovah's mouth. Then the devil took him along into the holy city, and he stationed him on the battlement of the temple, and said to him, If you are a son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels a command concerning you, and they will carry you on their hands, so that you may not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You must not put Jehovah your God to the test. So this is what they want Jehovah's Witnesses to think when they're doing their Bible reading, and Jesus speaks. They want them to think of the governing body, right? That's obviously deliberate, and it's very subliminal. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you want an anonymous person 
speaking as Jesus so you can picture Jesus when you're reading or listening to the audiobook. But he doesn't look nothing like Jesus, but using his voice, which all the Jehovah's Witnesses know, they're subliminally going to think of him. And that is very deliberate. That is definitely hypnotic. They they did that on purpose. Now, I can't quite figure out why they used the Lucky Charms voice. And I know it's not exactly this Lucky Charms voice, but that's what it sounds like. So when Satan is supposed to be this evil, horrible bad guy, this responsible, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, for all the suffering in the universe, which I don't believe that, but that's what Jehovah's Witnesses teach. What is their motive of making Satan a cartoon character? Right? This is not scary. That voice, that's not scary. Like, even if you think about the things like devil worshippers do, like a devil worshipper can appear to be scary. Right? Like, nothing is scary about the Lucky Charms character and a voice like that. So I can't quite figure out sublimity, like why they did that. Why did they make Satan a cartoon character? But I think it has something to do with just dumbing them down, making them maybe more so feel like they're children. Right? Like they're being read a bedtime story by, by their governing body parent. I don't know. Um, but let me know in the comments if you have any theories about why they made Satan a cartoon character. I, I don't know subliminally like what the purpose of that was. But clearly, he sounds like the Lucky Charmers guy while Brother Sanderson is Jesus. So one more thing I want to discuss on JW.org and uh, the brainwashing is how somebody like myself, and you, you've seen what that Watchtower article said, that somebody like me, I'm spreading half-truths and outright lies, right? Negative reports. Don't listen to me because we're just spreading lies out, right? So one of the things that I do on my channel that shows that I'm not lying about anything is when I cover the subliminal messages, I've actually ordered some of these books on eBay. Right, And I took the physical book, I looked for the subliminal messages that I've seen online, I found the messages in the, in the actual book, and I put the book up in front of the camera and I show the audience, look, go to this page, and there's a subliminal message. And I show it in front of the camera. I've done like five or six videos on these subliminal messages where I've shown the physical book. And I do that to prove what I'm saying. But witnesses are still told, I'm a so-called apostate, I'm just spreading lies, right? They say I'm spreading lies, even though I'm showing you the facts. So if a witness were to go on JW.org to see for themselves any of these subliminal messages, this is what they're going to find. So I just want to show you how they use JW.org again for manipulation and mind control. So go to the library section. Go to books and brochures, and you can go to page 24, because if you go to page 24, it's going to bring you to the beginning of all their older books, and then you can work your way up. So what I have on the left side is from the Revelation book, and it's page 52. And I did a video on this titled, uh, Hidden, Hidden Image Reveals the Spirit Behind Watchtower. So... It shows that one of Jesus' co-rulers really is a demon and that the witnesses are really serving demons, which is the subliminal message, which is why the guy standing next to Jesus has the monster hand and it's subliminally put in his photo. So in the video that I did breaking this down, I showed the audience. It's page 52. I put the literal book in front of the camera and showed literally this demonic image that's planted in their literature. So... If a witness is told, I'm giving lies and have truths, which is what the Watchtower claims, if a witness wants to try to look this up on their own to see the picture, to see if it's real, notice what happens when a witness looks at the Revelation book on their approved website. And they also removed the covers of some of these books because some of the covers also have subliminal messages right on the front cover, like the Revelation book. So as you see, they hid the cover too. But notice what happens when you go in the Revelation book on their approved website.
I'm going to go to any chapter, and you're going to see that all the pictures are gone. Right? All of these books in question that they claim are apostate lies, these subliminal satanic images, if a witness goes on their own website to verify it, they took all the pictures out, out the book. And if you go to other books in JW.org, they all have the pictures. Only the older books, they removed all these pictures. Well, why? Why did they do that? You see the game that Watchtower is playing? They tell the witnesses, don't listen to me or people like me because, oh, it's an apostate lie. It's half truth. It's falsehood, right? Flat out lies, outright lies. They're saying it's an outright lie when I'm giving you the page number. Yet, if they go to look it up on their approved website, the Watchtower hid all the pages or hid all the pictures from them. Right? So, who's lying? Me or Watchtower? I'm showing you the facts. I have my evidence with me. I'm saying this is why they're hiding things from me. Here's the evidence. Watchtower just simply says I'm lying, and what do they do? They hide the evidence that would exonerate them, right? If I'm lying about this, Right, if what I'm saying is a lie, then if you have the pictures up, they could show. Look, it's an apostate lie. There's, there's no demonic hand. Now let's take another one. So, this is also, or no, this is from the um the Paradise book. You can live forever in paradise. How Watchtower took a picture directly from another magazine, and this person also does porn. So, and I'm not going to get into all the, the reasons why that's so wrong for Watchtower. You can watch my video titled uh, Watchtower Cut Using Porn Stars. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But this is another one where you can clearly see the picture is directly from that magazine. It's not a Watchtower artist that drew of their own creation. They stole and drew this picture of a porn star in the Live Forever Paradise book, right? That's, that's the evidence. It's page 93. I'm telling you the evidence, right? So if a witness decides, okay, well, I'm going to go on the You Can Live Forever Paradise book to prove it's an apostate lie, well, what's going to happen when they go look at the book on their approved website? Well, here it is. You Can Live Forever in Paradise Earth. So when they go into it <clears throat> to try to look for page 93, they're going to see that it's the same thing. They removed all the pictures. Right? So who's lying? Who's covering something up? You see, they say, oh, so-called apostates were spreading lies and have truths. I'm giving you facts. I'm showing you from their actual books, their publications. I'm giving you the page number. They use JW.org to information control. So they put the books in JW.org, but they hide all the images. And here's another one from the, the Paradise book. So this was page 250-something. I forget what it is, um, because this page doesn't have a page number. It's on the opposite page. Um, I'm drawing a blank on what page number that actually was, but this also is from the You Can Live Forever and Paradise book. And I have a video titled, I think it's called uh, Egyptian God Planted in Paradise book. So that shows the page number and everything, but... Here's another one where they secretly, subliminally put an Egyptian god that they say is demonic in the background subliminally. And when you look up what that is, it's a known god in Egyptian art. So I show you the page number in the, in the, the video on my page. I'm showing you the book it's from. Here's the evidence. Right, You can see on the left the picture right next to the page in the watchtower, that is a blown up picture of the Egyptian god in the background. And then you see the known Egyptian art and you can see it's the same thing. But if a witness goes to look it up, all the pictures are missing. But then they say that all the stuff, all the negative stuff about Jehovah's Witnesses are lies. So you see, JW.org, it is used for information control. They can use, they can block their minds, keep these things a secret from them, 
And on the right, that's a blown up uh, paragraph from that watchtower that, that we read earlier. And modern times, a few well-known witnesses have left their truth, right? Because their definition is so true. It's the very definition of truth itself. And become apostate. And then they try to turn others away. They have spread negative reports, half-truth, and outright lies about Jehovah's Witnesses through news media and the internet. Now, when you look to the right side, do you see anything that's a an outright lie? Do you see anything that's a half-truth? Right? And these are just some of the work that I've done on my channel. There's thousands of these subliminal messages planted all in JW literature. These are just the ones, some of the ones that I covered so far. And again, you could say, well, that's a negative report of the child abuse in Australia. Well, is it really negative or is it positive because it's being dealt with? But whether it's negative or positive, it's a true report. And as I mentioned earlier, what person in their right mind would actually say that Jehovah's Witness parents, what they need to be concerned with is Brother Oleg released from prison for his faith, right? Where they keep the real news hidden from Jehovah's Witnesses. If this organization cared about its members, and if they cared about children, they would want parents to be aware that just because someone is an appointed elder doesn't mean that they're safe. Doesn't mean you should just leave your children with anyone because, oh, they're a pioneer, they're a ministerial servant. They need to know this. Parents have a right to protect their children. They have a right to know that these are real things that happen. So what witness in their right mind feels that Brother Oleg being released from prison for his faith is the news that Jehovah's Witnesses need to hear? And then as you can see in this article on the Watchtower, they're trying to tell the witnesses that all this stuff that you see on the right are lies, right? Even CNN is a lying through the news media, right? So they want you to believe that this is a lie. You see, this is evil. Like, they know, the, 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 the governing body knows that this child abuse is all over, and these things are happening, even among elders. They are deliberately... They're deliberately lying by telling their members that that is a lie. All this stuff is outright lies. And then they twist the word negative report to kind of, you know, skirt around it. But whether you want to call it negative or positive, the point is it's a true story and it needs to be the witnesses need to know that. So JW.org is a sham. The newsroom, it's a sham. They're deliberately covering the real story up and then they... They slander people like me by saying that I'm lying about stuff. And yet I'll give you the page number and then you go on JW.org to verify and they hit all the images and all the page numbers, right? So, or not the page numbers, but they hit all the images. So I come with facts and I can say 90% of other XWJWs that I've seen also come with facts. But we're told, or witnesses are told, we are lying and only trust JW News. And I challenge any Jehovah's Witness to tell me that Jehovah's Witness parents, what they need in the newsroom is Brother Oleg released from prison. And that this should be kept off of JW. Tell me that with a straight face. And if you say that, you're helping to cover up CSA. If you really believe that this story should not be on JW.org, but instead Brother Oleg released from prison, you're part of the cover-up. And then you have the Lucky Charms guy as Satan and Brother Sanderson's voice as Jesus, right? So that anytime you hear Jesus speaking, you're going to picture this guy. This is why they'll say, you know, even if they give you direction, you'll understand, do it anyway, right? Because they are Jesus, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. That's the that's subliminal messaging and hypnotic messaging with this. So that whenever they're doing their Bible reading, every time Jesus speaks, they're going to see this guy in their subconscious mind, a governing body member, the same equivalent of Jesus himself. 
And again, let me know in the comments if you have any idea why they made Satan sound like the Lucky Charm Charms character. What is that all about? So, next time, it really will be the last part of Watchtower Hypnosis caught on video. Right? This really will be the last part next time, but it won't be my last video. But I'm going to conclude this next week. And... What I'm going to discuss next, next week is the hypnotic programming and brainwashing, particularly on a JW broadcasting side. So for those who have never been Jehovah's Witnesses, the broadcasting is more so what they call their videos. So I'm going to examine a bunch of their actual video content on their website next week. 